Pai do Senhor Jesus, irmão. Greet everyone da peace of the Lord Jesus. Vou mudar de tela aqui, que esse aqui não está. Eu vou mudar de tela, porque esse aqui tende a lock up. Let's open the word of the Lord in the first book of the Bible, book of Genesis. Capítulo 8. Leremos do verso 7. Genesis 8. Ao verso 12. We're going to read from verse 7 to 12. Thus uh, says the word of God. Then he sent out a raven, which kept going to and fro until the waters had dried up from the earth. He also sent out from himself a dove to see if the waters had receded from the face of the ground. But the dove found no resting place for the sole of her foot, and she returned into the ark to him, for the waters were on the face of the whole earth. So he put out his hand and took her and drew her into the ark to himself. And he waited yet another seven days, and again he sent the dove out from the ark. Then the dove came to him in the evening, and behold, a freshly plucked olive leaf was in her mouth, and no one knew that the waters had receded from the earth. So he waited yet another seven days and sent out the dove which did not return again to him anymore. Lord, we praise you. Thank you. We are thankful for everything that you have already shown to you in the service tonight. Your grace, your favor, your mercy. We thank, ask you, Lord, that in your word you may complete the blessing upon each one of your servants. We pray in the holy name of Jesus. Amen, my brethren. The word of the Lord says, speaks about on this text that we just read here, speaks about two doves, two birds. First is the raven, and the second is a dove. And it's interesting that in the, from the first chapter of Genesis to chapter 8, no name of or the bird was mentioned. The first time it was mentioned of the name of a bird was the raven, the crow. And the second name of another bird is the dove. The other, the, old, the only other animal that was mentioned before the name of the crow is the name of the whale, which is on the first chapter of Genesis. But the first bird that was mentioned in the Bible is the crow. And this has a prophetic meaning. When we look to the crow, we see that there is also a project of God for, for the crow. And it's interesting that the crow, at a certain moment in the history of Israel and of the people of God, he was used to feed prophet Elijah all the way back near the river of Kedit. In Proverbs chapter 30, it says that the habit of the crow or the raven is that when a small animal was was sick, the crow or the raven would attack this small animal and pierce the eyes of the animal so that the animal would not drink water and therefore would dry out of thirst. And then the, the raven or the crow would feed off the flesh of that animal. The crow has no uh, independent, uh, it's completely independent and has no fixed dwelling. And interestingly, all the characteristics that I mentioned, even the bad ones regarding the, the raven, God speaks about it in the many passages in the Bible. In Job chapter 38, it says the following, where prepare the, the crow, the, the food, when their children shout out to God, vague, vagrant, asking for something to eat. In the book of Psalms, it says, they give to the animals their sustenance. And the children of the crows, when they cry out, Psalm 147, in Jesus himself, in the book of Luke, he speaks about the crow. He says, look at the raven. They do not sow. They don't have a silo. But God feed them. 
even more you. They were, you're much more valuable to us than the birds. In the book of the law, even in Leviticus or Deuteronomy, God says that crow is an impure animal and that you should not eat this animal. And this animal has no use for the Holocaust, for the sacrifice. Every crow according to their species in Deuteronomy 14.14. 14. Why then God mentions this bird and showed that this bird was inside of the ark of Noah. And the Lord ordered Noah to set, separate the impure animals, seven and seven, seven male, seven female, and uh, the ones that were impure, including the crow, one male and one female. So we see the quantity of the animal that were pure in the, the Ark of the Covenant and in the Ark of Noah were, anim were in the pure animals and the impure animals were less. So that has a meaning. And the other animal I was mentioned was the dove. And the dove is very different than, than the crow. The dove in its majority eats, eats out of seed and fruits and leaves. The couple remain throughout their, their entire life together. And that's very interesting. There's a covenant with them. And this alliance, this covenant is not broken. We can even mention here, like Christ and the church. They, they have this covenant throughout their life, throughout their cycle of life. And the dove, they have a a great sense of direction. The brand may have already heard this. They used to use Dovas uh, to deliver mail, deliver messages. So if you raise the dove here and the pigeon, and then you go a hundred miles away, and then the, the pigeon is able to go back home. The dove does not get lost. There's a verse, a Bible verse that says the following. You hear a voice that is from behind you saying that they, that's the path. Do not go astray to the left or to the right. So in other words, the dove knows the path that leads to home. The dove knows the path to the place of its inhabitants, to the place of its origin, the place where it was born and raised and received protection, food, the place where it was cared for. So there is a, a great connection between the dove and their natural habitat. The dove, its home, the bird, its house. The dove is not a solitary animal. That it try to always to be together with their flock. And this is very interesting. That's why the Lord uses these two examples here in the Word of God. There's a phenomenon called faithfulness to the location of origin. So the dove always returns to its place of origin. So we see in the Ark of Noah, there were these two, beside other types of birds and many other animals, there was also a crow and also a dove. And the Ark, the Ark, is the plan of God and the project of God. So God this chose to save Noah, his family. God told Noah to build an ark. So all the measurements for this construction to take place and everything that Noah did, he did according to the instruction of the Lord. That's why he was successful, he was prosperous, he was blessed. He was delivered of that destruction that was about to come upon the world. So the ark in the Bible is a place of salvation, the place of the presence of God, the place where the Lord preserves life. We can even say that the ark is the project, the ark is the church, body of Christ, the place where Jesus he has placed us in order to save us. The ark is the place of deliverance. 
being outside of the ark. What exists outside of the ark? Death and destruction and what was inside of the ark. Life. And the desire of the Lord is exactly this. I came so that you may have life and life in abundance. But the word says, my brethren, that in spite of the fact that the ark is, is being a product of salvation, the ark also, also represents the Church of Christ. The ark does not save because the one who saves is Jesus. So in Christ Jesus, we are saved. But we need to be in the ark, in the church as a body of Christ, so that the project God may be fulfilled in our lives. Because the Bible says that whoever gets isolated sins, if someone got out of the ark, would surely die, would drown. So that's what the Bible speaks about, the, the people that sink, they would drown in their faith. So it is interesting that in the Ark of Noah, there was the family of Noah, because the Bible speaks of, said that God wanted to save him and his, his family. And Jesus gave us the same example. Jesus says, if you believe in me, you will be saved, you and your household. That's why the Ark represents this entire project of God. But the Ark, it was there, the family of Noah. And there was also other animals. As I mentioned here, seven and seven. Seven male, clean, and seven clean female. Seven male, one male, one impure male, and one pure impure female. And Jesus says that it's interesting when he speaks about the weed and the shaft. He said that they would both be together. In the, in the church, is the same way. We have the same, every type of people there. People that have commitment with the plan of God, with the project of God, and people that don't have any commitment with the project of God. They, because sometimes living in the church is not easy. Living in the ark and in all those days of Noah it was not easy. It involves destruction. And well, there were so many animals there. There were people, snakes, scorpions. That's this small is filled with thorns, a por a porcupine. <laughs> and in the church, in the project of God, there is a place for everyone. God did not separate. Now oh, this one will be saved. This one is not going to. God is giving an equal opportunity to everyone. Everyone has the opportunity to be saved. Every type of people. So the ark represented this as well. The crow and the dove, they both represent this all type of people, the entire humanity. The ones who have commitment with God and the ones who do not have commitment with God. The ones who serve God and the ones who do not serve God. The shaft and the wheat. And they were all together. And it is interesting that oh, I'm going to leave the church, I'm going to another denomination. Denomination has nothing to do with salvation. There are only two churches, the faithful and the unfaithful church. Oh, but I'm going to leave the church, but I can't take it anymore. All those animals, so much problems, so much difficulty. So many different people thinking maybe in a different way. But Peter says the following. And when Jesus asked him, don't you want to leave? And Peter answered, Lord, where are we going to go? Because only you have words of eternal life. In another verse, he said the following, Where am I going to go from your spirit? How can I go away from your face? There's no other place. In life, in the plan, or inside of the ark, in the project of God, or outside of the ark. Death and destruction. If you believe in Jesus, you'll be saved. If you don't, you are already condemned. In the same way, the prophet uh, from the northeast of Bra Brazil says, I'll be, living, be here and may God bless me. Whoever leaves the, the land of origin, they have no other place to go. And same thing that Peter says, where am I going to go away from your spirit? 
So the Ark of the Covenant, covenant the, the Ark of Noah represents the project of God. And the crow and the dove represent two type of people that they are inhabiting this same ark. And the text says, my brethren, that the crow was released and would go back and forth, go back and forth. Many times we are like this. We keep going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And the crow always tried to live in two different environments. <coughs> Inside of the ark and outside of the ark, inside of the ark, outside of the ark. It's like we say in Brazil, the Christian that has a foot inside of the church and a foot in, uh, on the world. So, this type of Christian that has, doesn't have a commitment, that's the characteristic of the, the crow. But the dove is, is different. The word says that when the Lord, Noah raised the dove, the dove would go back and forth. But here is not it's not registered the time for for the crow. But when Noah leads for the first time the dove, the time began to be measured. And that's interesting. You see that it's three periods of seven, 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 seven. Seven speaks about the project in the perfection of God. Seven speaks about the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So the Bible says, my brethren, that when Noah, he releases the dove for the first time, and he released the dove in order to see the situation if the waters had already receded, he needed information regarding what was happening because he was in the ark, protected, but he could not see the destruction that was around him because the only place they had access outside of the ark was a window that was in the upper part. And here, remember an interesting detail. I raised my eyes to the mountain where my help will come from. Because God wanted to show to Noah that the help would come from above. It is from above that comes our victory. So when the servant of God was there in the island of Patmos, John, what happens? He saw, his, God opened his spiritual eyes, he saw a door that was coming from heaven. So the Ark of Noah rep represents this, this alliance, this covenant. The, Ark, the Noah's, Noah's Ark represents the direction to which we need to go. The place that we need to look towards our target, our objective. So when he releases the dove for the first time, the word says that the dove was not able to find rest for its feet. The first time that the dove left the ark, the dove looked for a place to rest. It is interesting that when Jesus is born, there is no place for Jesus. That's where he... There was no place for for Jesus to be born. That's where he went to a manger because there's no place for Jesus in a hotel. At a certain point in time, a man wanted to be a disciple of Jesus. He said, Master, I'll be with you wherever you go. And Jesus told this man, hey, my friend, the fox had a, had a place to be. The, the doves have nests, but a uh, son of man has no place to rest his head. So, the dove went out to the world, but was not able to find a place in the world to rest. And Jesus, when he leaves his eternity, when he leaves the house of God and the house of the Father, he does not find in man a place to rest. That was exactly the, the, the Lord, what the Lord was showing, the servant of God. It also represents the church. It doesn't have a place to rest in the world. It doesn't have a place for you and I who are participating in this service outside of the ark. In the world, you have afflictions. There is no other place for men to rest. But Jesus says, Come to me, whoever is tired and overloaded, and I will bring relief to you. So Jesus has a rest, has relief. I am your rest. 
Jesus is our Sabbath. That's what he's showing. So the dove went out, was not able to find a place to rest, its feet. So it is interesting also for us, for our lives, to serve a God. Sometimes a servant of God wants to leave the ark. And sometimes he goes out because Jesus is the door. You can come in and go out. You have freedom to do so. So he goes out to find a place, but he was not able to find. But then he goes back because he was not able to find a, a safe place. The Bible says that the dove could not find a place to rest its feet. The, the place was still not, the land, the earth was still not dry. There was no place for the dove to, to land. So it returned to the ark. So the servant of God needs to go out, look around, and have to realize this place is not good for me. This is not safe for my spiritual life. So then men should return to the ark because in the ark you have protection, you have food, you have deliverance, sustenance. The, the environment was not safe. And my brethren, we can only leave the ark if it is safe. If it is not safe, don't leave the ark. And there is a time for the church to get out of the ark. There is a time for you and I to leave the ark. So that, but the time is not determined by me, you and I, but it is determined by the Father. The Father is the one who is going to determine the time of our deliverance. So the dove got out, was not able to find a place, and then it returned. So then he waited for seven more days. Seven more days. The project of God was, was continuing. So Jesus came, was not able to find a place to rest. So what does he do? He dies. So now he comes afterwards, what? The second. The second trip of the dove. And the second trip of the dove. The Bible says that on the afternoon, the dove returns. So my brethren, we see the sacrifice of Jesus took, took place on, on the afternoon, the sacrifice of the afternoon. 3 o'clock he died, and at 6 o'clock he was removed from the, the cross. And when the dove returns, the dove returns now bringing something in its beak. So Jesus says, I'm going to the Father, prepare you a dwelling. And I'll return once again. If I go, I'll send you my spirit, and my spirit will testify of me. He was speaking about the Holy Spirit. And when Jesus is baptized, the Bible says that the identification was that a dove would land upon him. And the branch of olive tree, who is the olive tree? In the Old New Testament, it speaks about Jesus. Jesus is the olive tree. He's the good olive tree. And there is a song that said, Christ is the olive tree. In him I'm happy. I'm drafted in him. I'm happy. This is a song. So, the dove brings on its beak a message, a branch of olive tree representing what? Representing Christ, because the Holy Spirit testifies of Jesus. The Holy Spirit speaks about the plan and the project of God through Christ Jesus. And the dove with the branch of olive tree is very well known throughout the world. Jesus is known through all uh, around the four corners of the earth because the gospel is being proclaimed around the world because through the dove, through the Holy Spirit, there is an important detail. When you see a dove with a branch of olive tree on its beak, what is its meaning? The world knows it means peace to the world. A dove with the branch of olive tree means peace. The whole humanity knows that. And who is peace? The Bible says that Jesus, marvelous counselor, mighty God, Father of eternity and Prince of peace. So when the dove brings a branch of olive tree, it's telling him that the period of destruction has come to its end, and that the branch of olive tree means the 
pact, a covenant, the alliance between God and man, and between God and Noah, between God and his family, between God and his household. The branch of all the three is the good news, is the hope, is the revelation of the plan of salvation in Christ Jesus. That's why it brings this good news, the news of great joy. There was going to be destruction all over the place, but now it brings a word of hope uh, because that Jesus comes, blessed be the name of the Lord. The church will be taken up in a rapture and will be with God in His, etern in him, his eternity. So we see that in the second time, the dove brings this branch of olive tree, it brings this hope for men. The dove reveals to man this project that God had for man's life. And it is interesting that when Jesus, he speaks there in, in John, if I'm not mistaken, no, in Luke, he speaks exactly about this. He says that, no, I got a blank here, oh, I remember, the Consular, the Holy Spirit, is go God's going to send in my name. He'll teach you all the th all things and he'll cause you to remember everything that I told you. So the branch of olive tree in the beak of the bird, representing the Holy Spirit, is, is to cause you to remember, each one of us to remember the pact of the covenant, of the agreement between God and man that is in Christ Jesus. The word says that Noah, he waited for seven more days. Sometimes we don't want to wait. We are in the ark. God is sustaining us. He's delivering us. He's blessing us. He's providing to our needs. However, we sometimes want to hasten God's time, but that day and the hour, no one knows, not even the angels or even the Son, but the Father alone knows. The Bible says in Matthew 24, and after Jesus speaks about this time, He says something, he says something interesting. The same as it was in the days of Noah, the time that no one knows, and in the same as it was in the days of Noah, referring to that time, the time of Noah. So, my brethren, the Bible speaks about this. And for the third time, the word of the Lord says that the dove was released. The dove was released. When the dove was released for the third time, it didn't return anymore. When the dirt left the ark, it went out to a destination. Remember, in the beginning, when it said that the dove is faithful to its origin, in the book of Job, it says, In my nest, I will breathe, and my days are going to be like sand. So when the dove leaves the ark and goes towards its home, the eternity, the Church of Christ, will only leave the ark in the day that is appointed by God. I don't know the day and the hour. You don't know. The angels don't know. Jesus don't know. But this day is coming soon. And when the dove leaves, dove, my dove that flies in the mountains, it speaks about this on uh, the Song of Solomon. When the dove leaves and goes to its eternal dwelling, in its place in the eternity, that's why we cannot be haste, hasten in trying to change the time of God. In the time of the ark, there were three periods, the, the period of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And all of them, the family of Noah, they waited for the time to, re to get out of the ark. But we cannot try to change things, trying to change time. But it's for you, for, for me, for all of us, Sometimes you think that Jesus is waiting, to, taking too long. I'm, I'm being on the ark for too long. I want to get out, take a spin. Uh, I don't want. I just want to get out. 
doesn't matter if it is not the right time. But sometimes God has a plan for us, a, a promise, but we don't want to wait for this promise to be fulfilled in our, for the right time for this promise. Uh, God promised for Abram and Sarah, and it, it took too long, and the wife of Abram got uh, another wife for her husband, and there was an, a lot of problems, all because of this haste. So the servant of God that was in the ark cannot be hasty, has to wait for the exact moment of our deliverance. When God determines the ark, the door, the window of the ark will be open, so then the dove will get out, so that the dove will not return any anymore. The Church of Christ, the faithful Church, the Church of the Saints, we take in a way to the eternal dwelling, its eternity. This is the plan, this is the project of God for our lives. So the text speaks about this. So then he released the crow, and the crow would go back and forth until the, the water dried up over the face of the earth. So then he released the dove. My brethren, my brethren we sh should not be crow. We need to be dove. If you didn't find any security outside, go back to the ark. Go back to the presence of God. Wait for the, for the arrival of the branch of olive tree. Wait for the good news. Wait for the sacrifice of Jesus upon your life. Wait for the fulfillment of the promises and the prophecies of our God. Wait for it. Stay in the ark. The good news is that Jesus will return. The good news is that in the blink of an eye, we're going to leave the ark, the project of God in this earth, in order to inherit, in, in order to inherit the eternal dwellings that He has prepared for us. It's a plan of the project of God for our lives. Amen. The Lord has shown also for us in the spiritual gifts. Let me see if I can read here. A woman had already started construction of a temple, and she had already built the the plant and the base, the foundation. But there were the things that appeared in her path, and she stopped giving priority to the construction. And we saw that then, then the the rebars began to rust. The base was being compromised, and the Lord was telling this sister tonight that she urgently needs to go back to restart the construction and to finish that project, to construct that inhabitants, and that tonight the Lord is going to give to her all the resources for her so that this may take place. And when the Lord calls us to His project, He provides all things. Everything is according to God's time. Everything is provided by Him. Salvation does not depend on us. It's not through works, but it's by faith. The work that Jesus performed in the cross of Calvary. So if you believe in Jesus, if you understand that God is a project of salvation, which is the ark, which is a faithful church, if you understand that, G that God wants to save you and your household, in the same way that He wants to save, the same way that He placed the dove and the crow in the ark, He placed the faithful servant in the ark and also the unfaithful servant in the ark, so that He would give to both of them the same opportunity of being saved. Noah did not waste the opportunity. He believed. He was able to see there then the glory of God being performed in his life. So my sister, if you believe that Jesus is speaking to you tonight, if you believe in this uh, the branch of olive tree that is on the beak of the dove, this promise of the Holy Spirit that is being brought to you, you will be saved. If you do, according to what God has ordered for you to, to do. Build your life, spiritual life, with 
with the foundation Christ Jesus. If you believe in Him, you'll be saved. You or your household. Otherwise, there will be destruction and death. If you remain on the ark, you have life, sustenance, and food, and hope. Without of, outside of it, death and destruction. There was an, also another spiritual gift, if I'm not mistaken. I think that's the only one, right? Oh, there was another one. I saw the angels tonight. They were, they were washing the feet of three people, three families. And the second angel would give new shoes. Feet speak about what? Speak about the path. This is the path. Walk on it. Do not go astray to the left or to the right. One thousand will fall to the left and the other one to your right, but you're not going to be hit. If your feet need to be washed, it's because they're dirty. And when the feet are dirty, it's because we, when we walk outside of the process of God for our lives, you know, it is when we stop hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit and you hear a voice behind you saying, that's the path, don't go to the left or to the right. So Noah, at that time, he depended, depended on the information that came from the dove in order to know the exact moment of getting out of the ark. My brother and sister, we depend on the dove. We depend on the Holy Spirit. We need to allow Him to proclaim to us, to tell us the right moment of our deliverance, the moment that we can get out of the ark. Because the ark is faithful church towards the eternity with Christ. So the Lord was showing that besides washing the feet, was also giving new shoes. What is new shoe? What is new shoe? This is what is a new shoe. The Bible, the Word of God. Not on the letter, because the letter kills but the dove, the Holy Spirit. The one who has the branch of all the three in the beak. The one that speaks what comes from the part of God. Christ Jesus, that's the shoe that we need to wear every day, right? He's the living word and efficient that can separate all things, discern everything that points uh, us to uh, the right direction. Amen. Invite those who can to stand up at this moment. Let's finish the service. Glorify the name of the Lord. Lord. Eternal Father, we praise you. We are thankful for your blessing, your mercy, for the covenant, for the, the alliance that we made with our lives, for this ark, for a church that is here in this world, for our family, Lord, and is also in this place, in this environment that has found everyday peace, comfort, refreshing, food, sustenance, and security. We praise the Lord because we are here dependent on you. We glorify your Father to you because you, the Dove, your Holy Spirit, has every day, Lord, directed our, our actions and our path, Lord, has brought every day a word of peace, of hope to our hearts, has convinced us, Lord, that we are on the right path. And that at any moment, Lord, this window will be open so that we can be with you in your eternity. The door, Lord, we glorify for your people, for your church, in the four corners of the earth, for our rescue, for all the benefits that you have given to each one of us. We plead to you, Lord, that you may receive us uh, praise in your throne of grace. We offer you. And we thank you for everything. In the holy name of Jesus, in your name I say, the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our good and eternal Father, and the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit with the, the old people of God, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen, my brethren. And to all the peace of the Lord. I'm going to remind the brethren that tomorrow we're going to have a transmission via satellite you know, through the official social channels of our church, the Sunday School come from the presbytery and later on seven at actually 8 p.m we're gonna have a yet another service of glorification in the name of, of our god and to all the peace of the lord if the bread can now open the microphone and greet each other
Pai do Senhor, irmãos. Pai do Senhor. Pai do Senhor, Jaqueline. Pai do Senhor. 